Hundreds of FEMA workers are on the ground right now in Hawaii searching for those missing and helping survivors. President Biden and the First Lady plan to tour the devastation Monday. For more on the government response, I want to bring in Nancy Cordes, who is from Hawaii. What more can you tell us about the support that FEMA is giving Hawaii right now, Nancy? Good morning. Well, we got a pretty extensive briefing, uh, Wendy and Errol, from the FEMA administrator yesterday here at the White House. She's just returned from Hawaii, and she ticked through some of the figures um, uh, regarding the resources that have been sent to Hawaii. She said more than 700 uh, FEMA workers have now been deployed. About 600 of them are already there. Uh, 30 canine teams have been deployed to uh, search through the wreckage and, and assist in the recovery efforts. Uh, 22 mortuary experts from the uh, Department of Health and Human Services with more on the way from the Department of Defense. Um, and then she highlighted uh, the Red Cross response as well. Um, I, I asked her about uh, whether the state of Hawaii is equipped to lead a recovery effort of this magnitude because it's a common misperception that when FEMA uh, enters a disaster area that it takes charge. It doesn't. It uh, takes a back seat to uh, state and local officials and provides them with the resources that they ask for. She uh, said, yes, Hawaii is a small state, but uh, that she believes that the, the state is up to the job and uh, that that it wouldn't be FEMA's place to try to take over. So, Nancy, I, I know that you're hearing a lot from what we're hearing from survivors, which is that they're still having to wait so many days to get any kind of government assistance, let alone communication. And as we said, you're from Hawaii. You may be more familiar with these types of issues. What do you make of the FEMA response to that? What is that response and, and what should they make of it? Sure. I mean, it's, you know, sadly, uh, not unusual for Hawaii residents to go through this. Uh, they have uh, endured a couple of major hurricanes over the past 50 years. It can be slow sometimes for uh, assistance to get to Hawaii from the U.S. mainland. Um, and, and often the state can be really overwhelmed in situations like that where there's mass destruction. In this case, uh, I asked uh, the FEMA administrator about these complaints that we are hearing consistently from survivors that they waited days to get any kind of assistance. And what she said was uh, that this is an island that has gone through a very traumatic experience, basically suggesting that uh, the assistance has been there since early on, but perhaps people were overwhelmed and simply couldn't connect with it. She said that there is now uh, a, a dedicated disaster relief center run by FEMA that has been opened on Maui at the University of Hawaii Maui campus and uh, so that that should help because now instead of just uh, calling FEMA on the phone or going online uh, people can actually go in person to that disaster relief center meet face to face with a FEMA worker any time of the day and 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 get that assistance in person that they are entitled to. She said that uh, FEMA has already handed out about $2.3 million to people who have been affected, and she said there's a lot more where that came from. What are you hearing there at the White House about President Biden's visit to Maui next week? Uh, well, he's going to be going on Monday. He will be heading there with the FEMA administrator. So she'll be part of the team along with Hawaii's Governor Josh Green, who will show him around, uh, show him what the recovery workers are doing, introduce him to some first responders and also to uh, some, some victims of this tragedy. Uh, he's unlikely to stay there that long. The White House realizes that any time uh, the president travels anywhere, there is a large footprint. Uh, he's coming there on Air Force One, uh, and that can pull resources away way from where they're needed. So I think it's unlikely we'll see him spend the night there in Hawaii, but uh, but this is part of an effort to make sure he gets there as soon as it is uh, logistically possible uh, as, so that he can see some of this damage up front and hear more about what uh, Hawaii's outstanding needs are right now. And in our last uh, moment with you, Nancy, we want to ask you about something in the more immediate term. The president traveling to Camp David later today to host a meeting with Japanese and Korean leaders. What more can you tell us on that front? Right, so this is really unusual. It's only the first time in his presidency that he has used Camp David uh, for a diplomatic meeting like this, a summit uh, between himself and the leaders of Japan and South Korea, obviously meant to send a message to that part of the world, China and North Korea in particular, about the uh, growing strength of this alliance. Uh, he has been meeting with uh, the leaders of Japan and South Korea 
all over the world over the past couple of years as he looks to show that there is a, a new sort of power center in the Pacific, and it involves the United States. He has cut uh, submarine, nuclear submarine deals with, with South Korea, and we've all seen U.S. submarines heading to South Korea. All of this as North Korea continues to work on its nuclear program and as China makes some uh, worrying military moves in the, uh, the theater as well. And so uh, they're going to be talking about uh, economic security, certainly uh, military security, uh, and and they're going to be trying to send a message from a, you know a, a place that we all know, Camp David, that uh, that this alliance is is here to stay. Really interesting, uh, Nancy Corder. Thank you. You're welcome.